there's a couple of different ways I ink. I ink for color and I ink for black and white. So I'm going to show you both of them. But we'll start with the color one first because we can just edit that one afterwards. So I've jumped to black ink and I'm using just a pen tool. Uh, I'm going to go somewhat of a finer line. So I'm adding thin lines and areas and thicker lines and areas. So I have a thicker line towards the cheek bone and a thinner line towards the eye or where the eye socket is. Thin, thick, thin. And you can do that with pen pressure and you can do that with uh, pens you'd use in real life as well. Uh, how thick the lines go and thin they go depend on the pen you're using. Some pens are meant to do that, others not so much. And so I want to kind of speed through this a little bit and if I have something I'm going to add in I will let you know. Okay, so here I notice that the lower lid's off a little bit so I'm readjusting the entire eye as I draw it or as I ink it. I do little edits when I'm inking anyways, and I think most people do. Alright, so I've inked this picture in, and it looks okay. Um, I'm going to just clean up a couple of these little lines. Like there are times where you get like these crisscrossing lines and just take a second to clean up them because they're just kind of a mess. Usually you can tell if I'm rushing out a picture by if I've cleaned those messes up or not. There we go, that's something. All right, now, uh, this is sort of how I would start with black and white. I'm gonna jump to a new layer, uh, but if you're doing in black and white, I would normally just stay on the same layer. I don't like this one. I don't like this bump on the head. I gotta fix that. This has been bothering me this whole time. Yeah, I guess it's a little better. I don't know. It bothers me sometimes. I gotta fix things. All right. Anyways, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I do for like inking, if I'm doing comic works, uh, which will require a couple of more sketches. So let's 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 add more to the sketch layer. Uh, and I'm gonna change the color to. I'll do red. Alright, so what I'm going to do is kind of map out where I want lights and where I'm going to have darks. So we know that um, we know she has dual color hair. Kind of like that. This is a black color but there's going to be some highlights. We're going to highlight that area, we're going to highlight that area, and we're going to outline the top. So what I've done here is this is where we're going to uh, not have color filled in. This is where we are going to have color filled in. This is like shadows uh, since we're working with really dark material anyways, which is a dark gray black. Uh, we're just going to color that in. The X is used in comics uh, in order to fill things in. Sometimes if you actually go and you read through a comic, you might see something that looks a little off and you'll see a little X in it. It means that it was meant to be filled in with color. I found it a few times, but um, this is going to be filled in with color, this is going to be filled in with color, this is going to be like a highlight. We're going to kind of add some other stuff here and here, but we'll do that later. There, there. Um, for the, eye, if the eyes, we're going to kind of just do basic eyes. We'll, we'll do the whites for those after, but for the hair, 
pick where I want my shine to be. Right there. So we're gonna follow that for shine. All right, and let's let's get into inking this. So I'm back to my inking pen. I use a slightly thicker one. And what I'm doing at this point is, uh, it's called betas. It's where you're doing your solid black colors. So we're gonna kind of work with that. So I still want to give like a light here. And I guess I could do this afterwards with eraser or light, in which I do traditionally. I mean digitally, but traditionally I kind of just do it all this way and maybe use white out afterwards. And since I want this to kind of still be white, to show the light, I'm just going to kind of push down hard on the pen and then just gently pull up as I swipe. I'm just going to go pew 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 pew. And I recommend flipping your paper. I'm gonna keep get, grab a little extra of the white this way. Like I did up here. And pew 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 pew. So bam. Uh, and this I kind of color in. Oops. Kind of color in a little bit. And I might make this line a little thicker. And I might add a couple little there. So we have like a little bit of shadow in with the light. And this is all going to be uh, darkened in. I'm going to kind of give the tip of that a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to come over here. So we have our light coming from this general direction. This is our sun. So we got to keep that in mind as we're doing the whole picture. I'm just going to kind of outline that's going to be covered in. This bottom part probably will not have much in the way of anything. And that's a small little area I might forget, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, now let's do this side. I'm going to grab some of this around the corner and then come down to do my shine. And we'll flip it. And then we'll start from down here to pull up from there. And if you want, you can kind of do like some jagged start down and work your way up so you have kind of like a a bigger shine or more inconsistent shine showing that there's more hair layers uh, but I do have it larger here than over here because we're turning around with the head we would not have a shine directly after here but since this whole thing is going to end up being darkened in we want to be able to actually see this so I'm going to draw a gentle line on the outside. And there are easier ways to do this digitally, uh, but I'm doing it this way so I can kind of show you in case you're doing it traditionally. We want to make this line as thin as possible, this like line between these two things. we're just trying to show there's something there and we'll taper up to that in there all right and over here we have this so we're going to kind of taper it about here and all this is going to be darkened in we still have some over here I'm just gonna kinda flip, 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 flip. Alrighty.
Alright, and since this area is probably going to get like less even light, I'm just going to come through with some strands of hair, give you some shadows, maybe some thinner ones. Okay. Uh, down here we're pretty much just going to fill this in, but let's try to give like a, just a little bit of a highlight on the back. Okay, so that's going to be called. Then. We have this little thing here, which will have a little bit of light. And I'm going to remove this back layer. If you're doing it traditionally, you will not be using the paint bucket tool, but digitally you can. So you just kind of fill in all these spots. It's not a good thing about digital, but. Bloop. There. I'm going to make sure you catch any of these in. If you're doing it traditionally, you can just use a paintbrush. Makes it a lot easier. Or use a Sharpie. <laughs> Let's not forget this. This is where the hair is attaching to the scalp. There we go. Alright. So if you're doing it like, um, Traditionally, it's you don't need to remove the uh, sketch marks until after you're done inking and it dries. Uh, for digital, in order to use the paint bucket, you'd have to get rid of it because it's in the way. But we brought it back so I can show you like the rest of this. So let's do the eyes. I like to do the eyes like this, but you can do eyes however the hell you want because this is your picture. And you can draw however you want. Sometimes it's okay to erase or, um, actually I'm gonna have to use white because we're doing this in black and white and I still need to use the other layer. Uh, but you can use white out if you need to. I do. All the time. Again, we're gonna just fill these in. Whoops. With black. And then afterwards, usually when the picture's done, I'll add the whites in, so I'm just going to do that now. And there we go. Eyeballs. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to inking. Um, like how I was doing thicker lines here is something I would have done a bit more. When it came to black and white. Gotta remember to work in white somehow. I'm 
I'm also gonna add a shadow to the neck. The light's coming this way, so we're definitely gonna get a sh oops, definitely not that. Get a shadow from where the chin is, which means this thing under here is no longer gonna kind of look like that, but we'll still have this. There we go. And what do we have? We had something over here. We're just gonna leave that solid. And here I'm just kind of like figuring out where I think the light would fall on this sleeve. And one thing else I do is add cross hatching. And this is kind of where there would be shadow, but it wouldn't be as dark of a shadow, or at least that's how I justify where I apply cross hatching. Add a couple of strands of hair. Biff. Biff. Now mind you, uh some of these edits are things I would have done. I wouldn't have initially have drawn the lines, but being that I'm doing this for both inking and coloring. Just finding little details here and there. You can also add cross hatching to the skin. Um, so if I was going to add tones, I'd add tones at this point. So I guess I can just to kind of show you what they'd look like. Um, let's add some tones here. Yeah, whatever. Uh, traditional tones are a lot more challenging to use. They require you to cut out, stick, and apply up right upon the page. I've done before. It's okay. I'd rather just do it digitally. So I usually scan any images in. And then I tone. Uh, we're only going to be using the one tone because I'm lazy and... Yes, <laughs> because I'm lazy. So this is going to be used for both highlights and colors. So this is, since her dress has like a, 
a dark color. We're gonna fill that in. Let's give some minor shading. Normally I would use different colors for these type of things. Like I would probably make the dress a little darker and the hair a little lighter and the shading. I don't know, different. <laughs> different. And there's a thing called tone scraping, which kind of gives it a slight faded look gradient maybe look I don't know how you'd want to it's not really a gradient in my opinion but it's great for adding a little highlights here and there I want to add some highlights to the hair in the back here yeah so that would basically be it if I was going to be doing this as The hell am I on? I want the eraser. Where's my eraser? Here's my eraser. So this is what it looked like if it was toned. If I wasn't going to do it toned, if I was going to do it more show and like, uh, I would do a bit more kind of cross hatching myself. So I'll show you how I would do that. So I'd pick where some shadows would be, like probably here. Under the nose, around the ear. I would definitely do it a thinner line. I don't know why I pick such a thick line, because I'm a dum dum. <laughs> And I'm being very, very sloppy with this, so forgive me. Eh, we get the general idea. No, I don't like that. Alright, well, you get the general idea, so I'm using, instead of using tone, if you don't have tone, you can just kind of do this and you still get the idea of the shadow, where the shadows would be. Uh, but let's go back to this picture, because we're going to color real quick. Mm -hmm. 